so yeah, I can see people joining. So we'll wait for some more time so that everyone can scan and join. Cool. We wanted more people to we join. Want more people. So that it's so, more interactive. Yeah. There is a giveaway and there is a quiz. So whoever wins, they will get that prize. It's a prize. So yeah, we'll just move on, like we'll, we'll take to yeah, so the next slide, please. Do you mind scanning the sir, QR code? You can so scan the QR code so that you can be part of our QS. So we'll move to the next slide. Yes, please. Okay, so we have Hello. more audience coming. Let's. Could you please join the uh, using the QR code? If you code. can just scan the QR code. will move yeah. Uh, yeah so this is the first questions uh, we just want to set the tone for the presentation so how many of you have some prior experience in tax so, so you, you can, can use your mobile if you to give your polls sorry yeah. anywhere yeah anywhere yeah going to cover it some very basic friends so lovely okay so uh, yeah maybe we yeah. are okay. yes Next. That's good. Uh, another question for all of you is is your entity or the business which you are part of uh, batch registered because we have some connection related to our presentation today we just want to see how uh, we want to take the session forward it's like okay. some of them are neutral right thank you everyone just so we'll move to the we asked whether you have your entity is VAT registered or not is for us to explain um, how the VAT is different from corporate tax. People often see that it's all tax, so they feel it's same. But VAT, the perspective is that VAT is just a consumption tax. Okay, it's not a cost to a business. So any business which charge VAT, it's not a cost to that business. They collect the input tax from the suppliers and they also charge VAT output tax from their customer. So after all, they're netting off and they are not paying anything from their side. So it's technically an output tax minus input tax, and they are not paying uh, anything from their side, from their pocket to the government. After all, they are giving what they have collected. So it's an indirect tax, uh, but the corporate tax is totally different. Corporate tax is a tax which will be paid by the corporations or the natural persons who are doing business, and it's based on the profit they make. So it's not related to, it's not a transactional tax, it is properly related to the entire financials and it depends on their profit. So this clear distinction is important since we see that much people who are joining us today is, uh, does not have much tax background. So VAT is totally different, corporate tax is uh, also different. VAT is an indirect tax, meaning by 
it is not the person who collect the tax, pay the tax, but the corporate tax is like it's a direct tax and it is the ownership or the responsibility to pay the tax is based on that particular business. So we, we have a clear distinction and UAE VAT is already in place, it's implemented since 2018 and corporate tax is going to be effective from this year. Okay. And just to give a little more background, in 2017, uh, UAE uh, has introduced the tax procedure law, and that's where you have come up with a tax infrastructure unlike other countries. Though corporate tax was here in this country, it was only depending on, on Emirate level. Uh, it's all for like natural resources or a foreign branch, uh, the branches of a foreign bank. It was very limited in applicability. So tax infrastructure overall was developed recently in UAE. So let's yeah. yeah. Also, when it comes to grouping of uh, taxes, when it comes to VAT, it is entirely different. If you have ownership above fifty percentage or fifty percentage, you can group the multiple entities. But when it comes to corporate tax, it has a different set of procedures. You need to have ownership and control like ninety five percentage above to group the companies to have a separate tax group for corporate tax. Okay. The, the here main point is that you cannot take VAT as a basis for analyzing the corporate tax. So that's the difference is with your question. Yeah. Yeah, we, we have that included in the sessions. Yes. Yes. So just to give a little more ba background, we will not uh, beat around Bush a lot, just give more advanced or administrative stuff, but basics. Um, the announcement of corporate tax was made in Jan 2022. I just want to tell you that the corporate tax uh, is very well prepared by the government than VAT. VAT, the whole thing development took place in six to seven months in 2017. But the corporate tax, the government have been prepared well in advance. So uh, the corporate tax the implementation date is effective from 1st June 2023, but the announcement was made in 2022. And this is the implementation date, the 1st June 2023, the uh, business with the financial year starting on or after 1st June 2023. Again, speaking on who is subject to corporate tax. Yes, yeah, so uh, this has been main uh, point in, of discussion when it comes to corporate tax. Who all are subject to corporate tax? So we can, there are three major categories that the uh, law has been uh, categorized, I mean, explained. One is the natural person. So natural person means like people like us who do a business activity and uh, meaning like maybe for uh, as a freelance or do any carry any kind of business activity or a business uh, in the region and there is legal person which is definitely obviously the companies uh, also any entities who is having a legal license and then there is exempt persons such as the federal and emirates governments who have been categorized as exempt uh, now the more uh, most, uh, uh, ex I mean, discussed topic was or category was the natural person. How a natural person is subject to CT. So to give you a very straightforward uh, example, like if you do trade or give professional services, or even even if you do a freelance license services, then you your income, whatever you are de deriving from that particular business activity, is subject to corporate tax. And there are more definitions and more decisions on ca categories to be specified by the cabinet moving forward. And now, not subject to CT, uh, your salary, your em employment income, your investment in real estate, dividends that you received, if you do any uh, stock exchange activities and you make any gains out of that activities, those are not included in the corporate tax. Yeah, so one distinction I want to say, I've told that corporate tax is a direct tax, but there is also something called income tax, personal income tax, which is applicable in other jurisdictions, in other countries. So you should not mix both with the corporate tax. So here in UAE, a personal income tax is not yet announced or uh, it's not taking place and uh, exactly. that's what we believe. So the corporate tax is totally different it's for corporation. But having said this, it's also important to understand that it's also applicable to a natural person. Means as an individual, it's also applicable to us if we are doing business on our individual capacity as of freelancers, etc. Yeah. Okay. So again, this is very big. Seventy-five thousand, you are going to pay at zero percent. Above three seventy-five percent, you are going to pay at nine percent, and it's going to be on a slab level. So we will explain that with another slide. And what what is this on a different rate uh, for multinational enterprises? So there is a few developments taking place internationally from an OECD background, where uh, multinational enterprises are categorized as um, a corporation with 
presence in multiple jurisdictions and where the consolidated revenue is above 750 million euro. Technically, it's like 3.15 billion dirhams in revenue. So that is categorized as a multinational enterprise. So if you, if you are part of an m and &E, that's going to be mostly a totally different rate, which is globally agreed as a 15%, but it, it's that the UAE as a country alone cannot implement it. It's a, a whole uh, lot of countries have to be aligned together to implement this. So most likely, this also would be in UAE, but until the government decides to implement, be part of this BEPS, uh, 2.0 pillar initiative, it will be at the normal rate of 9% for even for the multinational enterprises. Exactly. Yes, please. So, so the right. Uh, no. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I just want to again just simplify what you asked. The threshold is like if you're comparing with the VAT, there is a threshold for registration, right? So you don't have. No. Yeah, there's the same amount. That, that's where you get um, people get mostly confused. So there is no registration limit for registering corporate tax. Okay, this here simply means that if you have a profit above three seventy five thousand, you are going to pay nine percent. If your profit is below three seventy five thousand, it's going to be zero percent. On what terms you have to get registered, etc., will be covering other slides. So on registration criteria, it's going to be different. Yeah. So again, this is uh, we we don't want to complicate it. Just try to simplify, but just choose which all it's it's um, uh, key here. So, how do we derive at the profit uh, for uh, giving the corporate tax? We will take the base from the financial statement. So there is a statement of profit and loss, and and the financial statement, and the net profit is going to be the base for calculating the corporate tax profit. So. For example, there is a company with a net accounting profit of eight five hundred thousand. We take that here on the top, and then we will make some adjustments, plus or minus. Okay. So what we will detect is that um, unrealized gains of capital, unrealized gain on revenue items, participation exemption, exemption, foreign P exemptions, gains. So this is like a little more complicated. Again, it's, it's purely from an accounting perspective. So there are a few transactions which we take into the books uh, just as part of an accounting entry. For example, uh, you, you own a building, right? And it's there in your balance sheet. And the next year, the value of that building appreciated, okay? And as per accounting terms, we are not eligible to book that entire revenue take that into the books. We take that as an unrealized or, or deferred gain. It's just a banking or the bookkeeping adjustment, right? Actually, you have not got that uh, gain. You get that gain only when you sell it. But that is already reflected in your financials. So we are making some adjustments. So it's a bit um, advanced. We don't want to take that much. But if you have any questions, we are more than happy to answer. Um, and also, we will be deducting um, some expenses, which will be adding back some expenses. So if you have some background on VAT, like the entertainment expenses are not allowed for taking input tax credits, right? But that's different here in terms of corporate tax. They say that you can take even the entertainment expense, but to the 50%. For example, the whole event, this event is being conducted and there is an expense like there. Unfortunately, in Ramadan, there is no food. But if there was a food, uh, it's, it's, it somehow will be considered as an entertainment expenses because an FNB. So for part of corporate tax, they say 50 percent of the expense can be claimed. But if it's like and an, from a VAT perspective, but actually that expense is not for doing the business. So the, the government says that that you cannot claim it in, as an expense for paying the corporate tax. So that expense, such kind of expenses will be added up. Then we have round, now we, we have some adjustment in terms of revenue which is not realized. So here, just getting back to the previous slide, as I said, up to 375,000, this is the net profit, and up to 375,000, you don't have to pay corporate tax. So the rest uh, is 75,000, which is 450,000 minus 375,000, and you pay 9% only on the 75,000, which is 6,050. So up to 375,000 of profit, you are covered. You don't have to pay corporate tax. So it, it is basically a relief 
for the smaller startups, small medium businesses, and also for the startups. So any question on this? It's a bit, uh, we know it's a bit advanced. That is a kind of statement, a lot of adjustments. If you have any questions. Who will move to next? Thank you. The next. So we, we have uh, another poll question. We just want to know the level of understanding, uh, if you can. So if you can, Paul, what do you think, like, whether your free zone company is subject to CT or not? Would love to know your opinion. Smooth the maths. Answer no. Yes. No, the question just means that you think that whether free zone companies is subject to corporate tax or not. Just your but what's your understanding, understanding whether that. a free zone company, as a free zone company, is it subject to corporate tax or not? That's it. So, looks like most of them have answered no. Okay. So, yeah. good. We'll go to the next slide. Okay. Thank you. So, um, there are people like. The, since the introduction of corporate tax, this has been a hot topic, uh, whether free zone companies are subject to uh, corporate tax or not, because most of the free zone jurisdictions have given assurance that up to 50 years, you will be subject to 0%, or some say that up to 30 years, you will be given tax amnesty. So how does this uh, introduction of corporate tax will complement, because there is some commitment made by the authorities that up to 30 years or 50 years, you will not be subject to corporate tax and suddenly a federal law is being introduced in stating that there is a federal tax, uh, corporate tax across UAE. So th this topic has been a very hot and, and uh, initiated a lot of sparks in, in, in the debates. So uh, again, it, it's from the government, I, I also feel that it's very, uh, it should be a tactical move. Um, they should protect the interest of free zones with a lot of foreign direct investments in the free zones. At the same time, they also wanted to not disrupt the market, not disrupt, create an imbalance between the mainland entities and free zone. So how they played out, and, and for me, it's, it's very interesting. So in an overall level, from a high level perspective, yes, even the free zone entities are subject to corporate tax, but they get some exemptions in terms of not paying the tax at 9%. They can pay tax at 0%, which means that they will not pay tax provided they meet certain conditions. So we'll explain that in detail. Uh, from this slide, one is called qualifying free zone entity. The other one is qualifying income. So these two terms, which we have to understand in depth so that we can overall assess the impact of uh, corporate tax and the free zone, free zone entities. So um, the Qualifying income for the qualifying freeze on entities, which we will explain later, we have a poll question, but for the qualifying freeze on entity with qualifying income, the corporate tax is going to be 0%, which means that they will not be paying tax. Again, as I said, they are going to subject to corporate tax at 0%. At 0% means it's, they are not going to pay, but they are still subject. It's not exempted. So there is a difference between being exempted and being subject to 0%. Being subject to zero person means it's still the tax is applicable, all the regulation is applicable, but they are not just paying the tax, but it's at zero person. So they have to comply with the entire corporate tax regulation. So that, that's the difference. And for the non-qualifying income, it is going to be subject to 9%, and like the mainland. So as I said, it's very important for us to understand what is a qualifying uh, free zone entity and also what is qualifying uh, income. Nevertheless, all the entities are required to register and a file corporate tax return for every financial period. So there is a compliance requirement respective of you are a qualifying free zone entity and also earning a qualifying income. Yeah? Yeah. Next. So we have this Paul question here. So just what do you think of, out of these conditions that an entity should meet to become a qualified free zone person? So we have said around one, two, three, four conditions. Do you want the QR code to scan? Uh, 
Okay. Okay. Okay, good. If you think all, you need all the conditions, you can choose multiple conditions. Some are switching their options and changing the answers. We'll see. So yeah. Uh, oh, okay. okay, cool. Okay. One second, I'll just play the QR code. Okay, just read it. So you're done, we'll move. Oh, just cool. Cool. Thanks. So so like we said, all these conditions needs to be met uh, by a, to become a qualified free zone person. You need to have you need to maintain adequate substance in your in UA in the region. You need to derive qualifying income. You should not elect to be subject to CT at nine percentage and you should comply with arms length and transfer pricing provisions. Yeah, so uh, if, if anybody has chosen just one condition, I want to say it's all the four conditions has to be met by a free zone entity to become a qualifying free zone entity. Then only they will be eligible for tax at the zero percent. So what, what do you mean by economic substance or the adequate substance in UAE? Uh, I'll just say a tax loophole here. So if you have a mainland entity and you think that, okay, corporate tax is there and, and um, in the free zone I can incorporate a company, and I can park all my pro uh, profit in the free zone entity. Um, and, and this is exactly where this provision covers that loophole, where they say that if you wanted to book any revenue in a free zone entity, you should have an adequate substance. What does that mean is you should have adequate human resource, you have adequate office space, expenses in that free zone, which commensurate the income that you generate or the book in that uh, entity. So you cannot say that you just say I have another branch of another entity in the free zone. I can book the I can book the sales from there. So I just park all my sales in the free zone entity. I'll not book the sales in the mainland entity. So commensurating your uh, revenue, it, whatever it is, there should be an adequate substance in the free zone entity itself, and there should be a qualifying income. And we'll given um, what is a qualifying income is not yet explained. Uh, in the law, we are expecting capital decision to uh, um, explain what is going to be a qualifying income. But we assume that it is going to be the income generated within the free zone or from another free zone or from outside the country. So if, if for example, it's an assumption, it's not, it is yet to be clarified. Uh, just from this assumption basis, if you have generated an income from a mainland entity, for example, you have invoice to a mainland entity, then that is most likely not to be considered as a qualifying income that and that will be considered uh, subject to corporate tax at 9%. Okay. So, yeah. Take As for the low provisions, no. As a free zone, um, you're not, if, if you wanted to transact with the mainland entity, you should have an agent. Uh, yeah, and, and that's how you can deal with the mainland. But in practice, that's not the case. But that's where I found the beauty of corporate tax, where they also have taken a very pragmatic approach, where they have seen what's happening in the market, not just in the books. So, yeah. So, uh, yeah. you also have to make an election that you're not subject to corporate tax at 9%. So, while registering your application, you should say, uh, I, don't, I want to get this exemption. That's something you should do mandatorily. It's not that automatically applied. And uh, you have to com uh, comply with the arm's length price and TP provisions, trans uh, transfer pricing provisions. 
transfer pricing itself is a um, big chapter itself and we'll just try to cover the basics on that sure um, <clears throat> next so yeah. as i said the qualifying income is not uh, yet been disclosed uh, not known again there are huge lot of topics and exemptions on on, on this subject it, it will be depending on qualifying income what will be classified as a qualifying income um, will play a crucial role to determine whether free zone entities to what extent free zone entities will be subject to corporate tax or not yeah okay, next. now transfer pricing uh, so something which is entirely new for the entities in ua uh, entirely a new sort of record keeping requirement so to make it very simple transfer pricing means uh, ensuring that uh, the transactions between your related entity has been subject to certain principles so one of the main principle that has been allowed by the authority is arm's length principle uh, to give you an example for example you are selling something uh, to an unrelated party at uh, x amount but you are selling the same uh, service or same product to a related party with a different amount so that you take an advantage of uh, avoiding taxes to remove that or to eliminate that they have kept certain provisions and the major provisions is transfer pricing uh, requirement so any do any transactions between your related party should be at an arm's length principle so now we'll see what are the conditions that uh, comes under the uh, transfer pricing provisions so now coming to uh, what who exactly is a related party so they have given uh, definitions for related party and connected persons now kinship at uh, of fourth degree ownership whether you have indirect uh, direct ownership you need, if you have a control of that entity uh, if it the entity is of your uh, permanent establishment or a branch and if you are a partner of that entity and when it comes to connected person whether you are an owner of the taxable person or a director or officer of the taxable person or uh, any of the related party of the above so by this means uh, you will become a related party or a connected person of that entity and then you are required to maintain proper transfer pricing documentations so what does it mean is that it, it, the law doesn't say that you cannot transact with any related party the law says that if you're transacting with a related party or a connected person you have to maintain certain documents and it should be made sure that it's at arm length price which means that it is as if offered to a third party in the market you cannot have any privilege to a related party or a connected person just to simplify what is it mean? yes Thanks. so uh, why transfer pricing because moving forward if you are interested in corporate tax this is something a very core topic or the module you have to uh, have a deep understanding on so um, we are not here to uh, cover the advanced portions of transfer pricing the different methods etc but we just want to crack the logic why uh transfer pricing is important or why this provision has been introduced so in in case one take that there are like uh two group companies and we just uh, say group company 1 and 2 and this is in country 1 and this is in country 2 and in country 1 uh, the tax corporate tax is 0% and and company to country 2 the corporate tax is at 20% okay so we have the whole scenario there are two companies there are group companies they are related companies one is in country 1 the other one is in country 2 and in country 1 the tax rate is 0% and in country 2 that tax rate is 20% so just simple question um from this structure itself where do you think that uh, the group level uh, the company of the profit where which country they wanted to have more pro profit it's it's obviously country 1 right because there is no corporate tax right you all with me on this right okay cool so um there will be tendencies because there's a group transactions there is a transaction between group entities there will be tendency that we as a company uh, as a group level they move their profit towards the country one not country two now imagine there is a transaction taking place between company one and two and they are selling something to country two or the company this uh, country right so their selling price is 500 dirhams and their cost of sale is 200 dirhams and the profit is 300 dirhams i'm just using dirhams for both the countries for simplicity sake and if it's 300 dirhams they don't pay any tax it's going to be uh, zero now um if if the same thing it is being sold here um they have a third party price which is 550 yes. and and they the cost of sale is 500 dirhams and and the profit is 50 dirhams 
and the 20 percent of 50 dirhams is 10 okay so the logic is the selling price this country from this country they just instead of it should be 200 they could purchase that from a third party for 200 they bought that from a country one the company the group company for 500 and they have reduced their profit to 50 so it, it could be like around 300 but they just made it 50 and on 50 to 20 percent they are just paying 10 dirhams so uh, you, you got the logic behind it instead of buying from the country two, th this company instead of buying from a third person they bought it from a connected person in another country where there is no issue in billing they can bill any amount because it's subject to zero percent so this country as this company has reduced their profit to 50 and they're paying just 10 currency dirhams uh, tax so here overall that there, there is actually a tax evasion where they're shifting the profit from one country to another country and there's a group transaction involved and this is exactly the reason where uh, why uh, a transfer pricing policy document and, and a lot of regulation being implemented where the government says that if you're transacting with group entities there should be an adequate document and it should be at arm's length price if this country this country jurisdiction uh, the authorities can easily ask question you can get the same product or the same service from a third party for 200 why you have bought that from a group entity and what is the rational behind so such questions will be asked so that's one thing from a, even from a uae perspective uh, there are a lot of headquarters um, in, in uae in the free zones and in different uh, places and uae is known for that so now the question would be asked on a different perspective including uh, transfer pricing that you cannot just simply raise any amount of invoices you have to explain the your margins after all yeah okay So this is a very interesting update which came last week. Um, again, throughout the corporate tax law, it says that even the consultation paper, it said that um, the government wanted to keep the compliance cost a minimum. They wanted to reduce the burden to startups and uh, small medium uh, businesses. And this is one another welcome move uh, which has already been um, said in the regulation that there will be relief for small business and startups. This just this update came last week. So what is this update all about um, this in, in simple terms says that if you're a business below 3 million revenue uh, not profit if you're a business below 3 million revenue then you will be eligible to get a relief from corporate tax for two years so it's important to understand this relief is not for um, infinity it's just for two years you will get a relief and if your revenue is below 3 million and in any year if you exceed that three million then you will not be able to get this relief okay another important thing to understand is that if you are a qualifying free zone entity then this um, relief is not applicable to free zones the qualifying free zone entity so if you are a free zone you should opt to be subject to corporate tax then you can claim this relief right so there are few tax planning which can be taken place based on this overall uh, relief this has come last year and and clearly says that now because of this relief if any business is planning to uh, dilute their profit into multiple entities like you have an entity now they think that okay i'll start another entity so that i'll split the revenue i'll split uh, so that i'll come below the threshold of three million um, then the general anti-abuse rule of corporate tax will be applicable so God technically says that if you're making any changes in the legal structures or the financial structure, then you should be able to explain the commercial rational behind such uh, move and prove to the authority that it's not just to take the tax advantage. Yep. Yeah. Next. So now the administration and compliance aspects. So the CT re registration portal has been opened. So there is an uh, option to do an early registration. And once you have registered, then you should start preparing your financial statements. So uh, as per the accepted standards in UAE, so IFRS is a most uh, accepted standard in UAE. And then uh, you should then start preparing your and filing of CT returns. So uh, after your financial year end, you have given nine months to prepare and file your CT returns. 
and the same uh, deadline has been given for this payment of CT as well. And then record keeping, you should maintain your books of accounts and all the records for at least seven years uh, to, uh, so that like uh, it, it has been like kept uh, available for the authorities to do audit. And uh, clarifications, there will be a mechanism uh, released by the FTA to seek clarifications by the public. Uh, so there is, uh, unlike like they have a mechanism for that, there will be soon a mechanism uh, with, within FTA to seek your clarifications. So yeah, just, just to add on that, the payment of corporate tax in other jurisdiction, there is a requirement to pay advanced tax. Yes. There is no such requirement in this uh, corporate tax in this way. And also, um, you, you are given like nine months time after the end of the financial year to file the corporate tax return. So for example, if a company has a financial year from 1st January to 31st December, um, it's going to be applicable from next year, 1st Jan 2024 to 31st December 2024. 20. Their first due date is going to be 30 September 2025. So there is enough time to submit your return and also pay the return. But that doesn't mean that you can delay the preparation of corporate tax because next year it's going to be effective. Yep. Okay. Now, some of the major points that you should note when it comes to uh, do a readiness check and impact assessment on your books uh, on your company. Uh, so you should have proper planning on budgets. So when it comes to corporate tax, unlike VAT, this is going to be your expense on your company on your uh, financials. So you should do a proper budgeting on uh, on what are the kind of expenses that you allowed and uh, how it will impact your financial or cash flow. And you should train your employees, whoever is involved in this function or whoever is involved in this process, you should have give proper training to your employees that uh, these are the changes that's going to happen post this financial year. And uh, then do a complete impact assessment uh, with, the, with uh, either by uh, seeking with the professional advice and make sure that your IT and infrastructure, IT infrastructure and all the technical aspects to maintain your records and to do your accounting functions is updated as per the new CT regime and do an optimization on overall uh, business uh, transactions. Also, if there is an amendment, amendments to be done on your contracts with the supplier or with the customer, that will give more favorable uh, to your tax position. Needs to be done at the earliest. And do a structuring and alignment. But keep in mind that when you do any kind of structuring, uh, always make sure that you have proper justification, that you, you're able to give proper justification to the authority on the rationale behind it. And then uh, transfer pricing documentations, as we explained, uh, it is very important to maintain proper documents uh, to explain your transfer pricing provisions. And all the transactions and all the uh, records should be in compliance with the corporate tax regime. Also, always note that a corporate tax is a self-declaration process. So ensure that whatever you inform to the authority is as accurate as it is. Okay. So with that, like we have just one final question. Uh, so we believe that when it comes to tax or any kind of compliances, the main aspect of your business through your accounting records, you describe or you explain to the authority or your stakeholders, this is what happened, this is what's happening in my business. So I just want to know like whether, how many of you are here with ready books? Because when it, when it was in VAT, it was all about reporting your sales and your expenses. But when it comes to corporate tax, it's your entire financials, your P&L position, your balance sheet position, so and updated. So yeah, not that surprising. Most of their books are not ready. So yes, so with this, uh, now we'll move to a quiz. So we'll just have a quiz uh, for whatever topics we have covered. So if you all haven't joined, or if you want to join now, I'll just display the QR code once again. Because if you win the quiz, there is a price, and it, and it, it will be a surprise. So <laughs> make sure that you win the quiz, you give correct answers. All right. <laughs> so I think yeah, more people are joining. So we'll wait for like ten seconds, and we'll move to the queues. So after the queues, we'll have a Q and A session. So yeah. feel free to ask any questions. All right. So now I'm moving to the queues. So I want all of you to join.
we'll start. We'll start the queues, yes. Yeah. So we have around like 17 people joining. We just want to make sure that you have all understood something from this session. So. <laughs> okay, so we are going in the count of three. One, two, three. Yeah. So here comes the first question. Arrange the tax calculation order. So we just discussed an order of calculating the tax. <laughs> so now you are given like around five options. Now you would have to chronologically arrange the order. You can drag and arrange it. You can just click on that dragging option and just arrange the order. I just try to explain we are taking the base from a financial statement as a starting point. So once you have arranged, you can click on submit. Time's running. So yes, three, two, one. Was this question tough or easy? Tough? <laughs> so we have around. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, we have so, at least yeah. four people answering it right. Nice. So this is the actual order. So the net accounting and profit and loss comes first. Yeah, then that's the source. That's the starting point. We take it from the financials and we um, less any non-taxable income. And we add any expenses which is not deductible. Then there is some tax loss relief. Uh, we will add, detect that. Then finally we arrive at taxable income. Taxable Technically income. the profit which is subject to yeah. Operating income tax. Okay. So next, I hope the next one is going to be a little more easy. Yes. More people than so here comes the question number two. So conditions of qualifying free zone person. So we just discussed certain conditions to become a qualified free zone person. Out of these, what all conditions you think that? Okay. Time is out of time. Okay, so some of them have mentioned must be VAT registered. So it's not necessary. As I said in the initial stage, that it's not at all linked with VAT. There is no linkage established. So, but all these four conditions needs to be met to be a qualifying free zone person. Yes. Next. So going to the next question. Completing first half. Dash authority is responsible for the administration, collection, and enforcement of UACT and other federal taxes. It's a fairly straight and simple question. We did not address in this session, so. MOF means Ministry of Finance and FTA is Federal Tax Authority. That's correct. That's Most good. of them have answered correct. Good response. Next question. Next question. Both tax group and VAT group are the same. It's a yes or no question. Simple and straightforward. So we have discussed this in the session, so I think it would be pretty easy. Straight and easy. Yeah. started the queues now. True. 
a lot of okay. uh, you know, it's again great good response good response for uh, that so people were listening to our sessions thank you everyone <laughs> okay uacd regime will become effective for financial year starting on or after Which so it's very date? important to know it's very then the clause proximity so response so it's just a couple of months so the final question so so the winner will also be decided based on the time of response yeah. so the quick respond the sooner you answer the this, more too. points you'll get <laughs> any income of a foreign free zone company is subject to zero percentage cd it's again a yes or no question That's great. Good response. Okay, now let's see who is the winner. Uh, so that's the it. The best part, yes. Best part. Can I announce? Nice, Mr. Adil. Adil. Great. So we have your email address. So we'll send you a gift voucher to that email address. So please wait for that. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, everyone. Thank you for joining. It was a good response good. overall. So, uh, open to questions. question so again uh, i just want to give you some comparison between vat and, and corporate tax because there is no straightforward answer in the regulation yet because the qualifying income is not defined so we we can anticipate no, uh, yeah but but i'll tell you like the difference between service and goods is that goods are always for vat there is a concept of designated zones right so designated zones are there are few selected free zones which have some boundaries and they have a customs and where they move the goods from a free zone to designated zone to mainland it is through a border there is a check and etc right but there are many other free zones without the border so they are not classified as a designated zone the difference between goods and services is that service doesn't it not at all gets monitored at any point it, you can deliver through online it's not no one can place a control on that right so there is this gap between goods and services so technically from a corporate tax perspective there is no clear distinction between goods and services they say say it's as long as you conduct the business so we have to evaluate from that perspective so even if you're providing services there is no there are legal restrictions probably but even if you're providing most likely to a mainland then that will not be considered as a qualifying income and you have to pay tax that that should be the logic but let's see uh, the regulation Sure. sure. Uh, so I wanted more information on qualifying and some of that qualifying income. Right. I think we might have covered. Yeah, it's it's covered. So um, maybe if we can take that to slide. 
So um, we, we are even asked to question whether any companies in corporate in a free zone will be subject to corporate tax or not. So we have to un uh, understand in depth these two concepts, qualifying free zone entity and qualifying income. So qualifying free zone entity, it's, it's based on, can you take the next? Uh, so if, if a company uh, should be categorized as a qualifying free zone entity, these conditions should be met. The first thing is, it should maintain adequate substance in UAE. Means that in that free zone itself, they should maintain adequate substance. For example, you have a mainland company, you also have a free zone company, and you're booking all your revenue through a uh, free zone entity. But the substance in that free zone entity is limited. You have all the resources in the mainland, like for example, payroll, like the human count, the expenses, the big office, etc. Everything is in the mainland, but not in the free zone. And you imagine this entity is building around 10 million dirhams in revenue, and the mainland is just building 1 million dirhams. So, you know, based on the industry, the government or the authorities can say that there's no enough subsidy, which is commensurating with the income that they generate. So, I have a uh, software company. Right. Okay. See, if, if you have to, any free zone, it's subjected. There is no distinction between a designated free zone. So from a VAT perspective, you can eliminate that. All free zones are considered as a free zone. There is no concept of designated free zone. So for so, a company, yeah. I have three rights. Right. Okay. I mean, they work from home. Right. Uh, company in free right. Most of my customers are outside India, are outside Europe. Right. Okay. Okay. Right. Do I pay tax? Okay, for that, it's a straight question, and the straight answer is not, we have to, we cannot, we have to be a little bit conservative, because the law doesn't say what is a, a qualifying income at. But our assumption and our stand is that if you're billing only within the free zones or any other free zones, okay, for example, you're a DMCC company, you're billing to a client in DMCC or entry or outside the. paper released by the Federal Tax Authority, Minister of Finance. But when it, the law came, they have not addressed that. So once it is in law, then we can say that 100%. But this is going to be most likely. Yeah. Okay. Right, so uh, again, in the, it's a very good question. The people have started to do the tax planning. People have, like the business have started to, uh, there are f in the market you see that the salaries are transferred as a cash instead of to, uh, through WPS. Um, the simple answer is that it should not attract uh, general anti-abuse uh, rules, uh, regulations. You should not just do this uh, for taking the advantage of corporate tax. If it's a practice which has been followed, then you can follow. Even if you're doing some hikes, increment to the director's fees, giving salary to the shareholders, if you can explain the commercial rational behind such move, then that would be fine. Otherwise, it will be subject to guard provisions. Um, as of now, it's not uh, stated as mandatory, uh, but Federal Tax Authority can request if required, but uh, preparation of financial statement and submitting the financial statement is mandatory. Uh, we'll just, we'll take one last question. So, uh, do I have to maintain two separate books of accounts if I have things on one time and a mainland revenue? Um, again, we, we, it, it should be depending on the cabinet decision, the logistics or the arrangements on uh, what all things to be maintained is yet to be announced by the Federal Tax Authority. But of course, it should be clearly identifiable because you have an income which is subject to 0%, the other one is subject to 9%. So there should be proper records in place to clearly distinct between these two transactions, nature of transactions, yes. That's it, thank you, yeah, please. Uh, 
Um, See, um, if, if I would say another way is that you can also opt to be uh, fully taxable at 9% in the free zone. But considering we have to look at your financials, where you can save some money, if you said, if you have a clear financial benefit, if you're just moving to mainland, if you're focusing on mainland transaction, that would also be a feasible option. But check your financials. What are the benefits you get? Then, then you can take a call. I would say yes. Sometimes, if you're being in a free zone, some expenses. Are, are comparatively high, but we also expect over a period of time the government fees. That's that's overall in anywhere in the world where there is a tax, corporate tax, then the such fees should automatically come down. And and we we are from we are actually from Abu Dhabi, so we've seen that almost uh, a drastic reduction in license fee from the mainland. And, and Abu Dhabi. So such things do happen. I think it will take some time, but the cost of doing business should technically come down, and the government should focus. Um, enabling these private sectors to generate more profit so they can cut, take a cut from that. So that, that's an ideal economy system. So hopefully you will be reaching that here. Okay. Thank you. Yes. No distinctions. No, it's, it's subject to, right. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Thank you for joining us today. Thank you.